So what I wanted to, um, you know, to talk to you about is, is kind of give you an update on where from a Verizon perspective we are uh, you know, in this you know, VNS ZTP automation um, uh, automation journey, uh, because we really look at this as a, you know, as a, true, uh, a true journey for us, you know, for our partners and foremost for, uh, you know, for our, uh, our customers. Huh? Now, at Verizon, we are in year four. Year four, because four years ago, we actually, from a global perspective, launched you know, a global SD1 service for our global enterprise uh, um, uh, customers. You know, three years ago, you know, we launched our VNF platform. Two, two years ago, we launched UCPE um, and our um, you know, hosted network services, so using a cloud, uh, uh, a cloud platform. Uh, for that, and then last year we spent a lot of time, and I'll I'll be talking about that a little bit later on today, around ensuring that we can truly operationalize, you know, the different service chains which we are uh, uh, which we are offering, and then spend a lot of time on on uh, zero touch uh, provisioning and closed loop uh, closed loop assurance. Now, while we were doing this, and I think we we've heard this as well throughout the the session uh, the sessions today, you know. It's, it, we, we've always felt that it's extremely key to keep an eye on you know, what our true customer requirements are. And the thing which we always need to remember is that customers do not buy technology for technology's sake. If they did, then, and this probably shows my age, if they did in the 70s, Betamax would have been you know, the, you know, the leading video format. Huh? Um, and they also don't buy... Uh, they, they, they are looking for solutions to real problems. Huh? You know, there's this, uh, you know, there's this um, example of uh, you know, where NASA during the space uh, race got it wrong. Huh? You know, where they you know, got confronted with this problem that they needed to have a pen which could work in space, which you know, gravity doesn't really help there. Huh? And so they spent you know, a few million dollars developing a, a new pen they could use in space. Huh? Um, you know, with pressurized air pushing out the ink, etc. Uh, and they had all kinds of use cases for it. You could use it not, not only in space, you could use it on Earth as well. You know, you could, you could, make, you could uh, um, write with it upside down or underwater or uh, with temperatures up to 120 degrees. The Russians used the pencil. Uh, so it, it is important to think about uh, are we solving true um, uh, actual, um, uh, actual problems? Huh? Now, we know that our customers, and, and I'm obviously, from a Verizon perspective, I'm talking here, when I'm talking about customers, I'm talking about enterprise customers. Huh? Um, you know, our customers face many, many challenges. And you know these slides. You've seen many of these before. The good news is I'm not going to go through all of these challenges. Just wanted to uh, focus on just one of them, this fourth industrial wave, huh? uh, Industry 4.0, uh, which is really all about... Um, you know, the way in which, um, you know, industries use smarter technologies huh, to better design, better produce, better maintain, better service their customers. But it's also about how they internally transform themselves huh, uh, to become, you know, a, a company who can, who can tackle, you know, all of these uh, challenges which are coming, uh, coming ahead of them. Um, and, uh, you know, just to give you one other example, uh, Verizon participates uh, every year at uh, an event in Oslo called the, 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 the Zinteo Ex Exchange. And at that event, um, we had a presentation from the CIO of uh, um, the uh, Oslo Public Transportation Company. Now, Oslo is a... Is a um, um, is a city which is growing quite fast, 18% over the last two years, the uh, last 10 years, and at the same time is seeing traffic uh, use and car use going down. Now, if you're the public transportation company, you might say, job well done. Now, they actually questioned that huh? uh, and, um, you know, uh, reviewed with their customers, are they really such a fantastic, fantastic organization? And they, they, they heard back from their customers saying, you know, 
we actually have all kinds of challenges with the way you know tickets are being sold. You know, you annoy us in 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 many in many ways. So so they actually then completely revamped um, you know their uh, you know their ticketing system. Obviously going in an in an app uh, uh, direction using geolocation so that uh, uh, and, and at the same time removing all kinds of barriers. Uh, so they started to trust their customers, assuming that customers will will be paying, uh, and then by using geolocation and, and just allowing people to make use of uh, of public transportation, uh, they, and these customers then at the end of the month just get a bill. Uh, you know, so the, and then the best part, what what they did is they actually started to reward their customers for walking around in the city because that is the most efficient way of getting around. Uh, so a public transportation company truly reinventing itself. That is the reason wh why we are doing you know all of this automation. Um, um, uh, in our uh, in our industry, so how does this come together from a, from our industry perspective? Within Verizon, we talk about ultra convergence. Huh? You know, it's all you know driven by data applications and users becoming becoming more dynamic. We all know about this. It's about dynamic applications, the cloud, which is allowing us to continuously move workloads uh, workloads around applications and big data becoming more important. You know, users more dynamic, more mobile, all focused on applications. You know, millennials and others don't care how, you, how they get to an, app, to an application, they just know that they need to get to it. And of course, the explosion of endpoints due to, due to machines. And in the, in the middle is us, is, is the network and the security services which we you know, deliver, and either we become an enabler huh, of, uh, of, uh, you know, for the business of our customers, or we will be left behind and will be you know, just a, you know, uh, a provider of cheap, uh, of cheap uh, bandwidth. Uh, so how are we responding? So what have we been doing over the last, uh, you know, over the last, uh, uh, over the last few years, and then specifically last year? So obviously, as the one, that's where we started. That's where we continue to see our customers start their, uh, you know, start their journey. Now, as the one, obviously, mostly an overlay, an overlay service. The, cha the challenge, of course, is that it doesn't live in isolation. You know, it, it, it lives on top of, you know, delivery mechanisms, networking, UCPE, what, what have you. It works together with other virtualized uh, services. And that's where we continue to see that as an industry, we are still nascent. Huh? You know, so we spend a lot of time last year in, in operationalizing these service chains. Huh? Um, you know, making sure that, you know, an SD1 from one vendor can actually work together with the security solution from an, uh, you know, from another, uh, from another vendor so that we're able to design that, you know, deliver that and actually have the ability to then, you know, uh, fully automate and, 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 and do closed loop assurance on top of that. Eh? Um, then we, 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 you know, a lot of talk here about, about uh, AI and one of the things we want to do within Verizon is actually use some of these technologies to start delivering capabilities now. And so with, in, in cooperation with some, some of our partners, we, de we delivered a new software-defined wireless LAN solution. You know, uh, important for us was to get, get, you know, more visibility on, you know, how customer experience was actually it was actually happening on the wireless lawn now, of course we can we can we can control we can manage wireless lawns but it doesn't actually tell us a lot on how our end users truly experiencing the service and by using you know one of our one of our partners by using by using AI we are able to get you know a, a, a visibility onto the actual actual user experience so that we are able to predict you know certain circumstances when we believe the challenges may start to pop up because in the end it's about it's about applications it's about uh, uh, you know really acknowledging that customers in the end don't care about things like like latency and jitter and, and, and other things but they care about you know the application the individual transaction so that's that's a main a main focus and in order to deliver all of that you know, we've got the bottom there, you know, the focus on, on orchestration and, um, you know, enclosed loop, obviously making sure that that works together, you know, not, not just in one silo, because we have many of our partners who initially come to us and say, hey, you know what, you, you know, if you just buy this solution from us, great, you know, we can, you know, we can, you know, automate that. In the end, again, our customers don't care about that. They care about the end-to-end -end result. Zero-touch provisioning, a great example. We launched that uh, last uh, last um, uh, last year, and you know, 
you, you kind of discover that the world is more complex. The world is more complex than what you can imagine um, figuring out what happens in a lab environment, in a controlled environment. Once you let loose of these services to our enterprise customers in the wild, all kind of things start happening. Huh? We all know and that, that enterprise customers are using more and more consumer type uh, access solutions, consumer type broadband solutions, which may have certain characteristics we haven't even thought about in our lab environment, which is then causing you know, hiccups and, and concerns. Again, a reason why it's so important that you know, we stay close to our customers, close to these implementations, so that through an agile development, we can actually you know, fix some of these challenges. So, you know, UCPE is another great example. We see lots of interest in, you know, in our white boxes uh, from our, our customers, but it's creating challenges as well because they come to us with, with demands which we, not, which, we, which we are not always ready to support yet. You know, can we do co-management? Huh? Can you maybe activate you know, this you know, specific Wi-Fi feature which in principle you know, your box could support but you haven't, you haven't, uh, um, uh, we haven't operationalized yet? Or can we bring some of our our own virtual uh, virtual functions. So from that perspective, our enterprise uh, our enterprise customers are sometimes way ahead as far as their requirements are concerned. Then you know where 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 we are able to immediately deliver upon uh, uh, upon that. And then you know cloud. Yes, we you know we 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 we've we've, we've delivered a you know um, an open stack environment which gives us the ability to deliver you know our solutions both from a UCP and from a cloud uh, perspective. This is how it all comes together. Uh, so, you know, the, the, you know, the main, and, and this is a slide and a, and, a, and a summary we've been using for a number of, uh, a number of years, and, and the basic premise remains the same. You know, it's an open software, open platform, open hardware uh, approach where we, where we um, acknowledge, you know, that the world is not controlled, you know, by, you know, one entity who can dictate to our customers that this is the way you need to, uh, you need to go. So in principle, you know, we, we have support from, you know, a wide range of networking solutions. Uh, we, um, we, sh we give customers choice from a deployment perspective, can be purpose-built with some of our partners like Versa and Cisco, can be a universal CPE approach designed by, you know, by, uh, uh, by, by us or on a cloud. There's the platform, which gives us obviously the level of, uh, you know, the level of automation, a, ra a range of, uh, you know, partners with, with whom we, we work. And then, you know, the top level is what I mentioned, you know, these these uh, automated service chains, uh, which continues to be, you know, the biggest challenge which we which we see lack of uh, lack of automation, you know, lack of interoperability between between some of these partners pushes us to do that uh, uh, to do that um, 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 uh, those service chain um, and, and checking that they will effectively work uh, as uh, as uh, as predicted. We've got about 23 of those available. This is not giving you the full, you know, the full chart. We will continue to work on this, but obviously, you know, we're also working with our partners to make sure that, uh, you know, this entire solution becomes truly more modular and more pop and more pluggable. Um, if we go one one level down, um, you know, we've got uh, this approach. Uh, you know, the approach we're following is that. Um, you know, the platform which we are putting in place, we see that really as a customer experience enabler. And I think some of the previous, you know, speakers talked about the importance of customer experience uh, uh, all, um, you know, already. So if you look at, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the uh, conceptual view behind this, then, you know, we really look, uh, you, know, our, you know, from a platform perspective, we look at three layers, a presentation layer, a business and a, an application layer and a data access and management layer. From our perspective, this pre presentation layer is in all reality, you know, and obviously from a customer perspective, the most, the, you know, the most important one where we give insight into, you know, our, uh, our solutions to our customers, give them the ability to, to influence uh, uh, this as well. But we look at this from an end-to-end -end perspective, eh? you know, where, you know, from a design perspective, eh? you know, and an, and, an, and an initial ordering perspective, we want to give that, that control. Now, initially, today, that all still sits with, with Verizon, you know, where, you know, where, we, where we use, uh, you know, our service designer uh, to allow our uh, sales teams to, to design this. Over time, this is 
is going to be opened up and given uh, as an ability to our uh, to our customers as well. In the in the middle piece, that's obviously where you know the the concept of modules comes along, and uh, and I think this is you know I think in the panel this was mentioned as well. This is really what is extremely important from our perspective. Um, this entire world of uh, you know automation and SDN and and God knows what, you know, is continuously evolving. It is. A, extremely dangerous to, ignore, to, to, to state today, okay, this is it. This is the solution. You know, put all of your bags into that one basket. You know, what may happen is that your basket, together with all of your eggs, may be left behind. Eh? So I think it's important to have a vision, a direction you're moving into, but then you know, uh, ensuring you know, that you're able to, to flexibly adapt to changing market, uh, market conditions as well. And then you know, the bottom layer, you know, from our perspective, it's about you know, the fact that it needs to be open. It's about you know, interface, uh, it's, about, uh, it's about APIs. It can be APIs and you know, figuring out, and you know, also the, on, the, on the panel it was mentioned, the, the importance of, of looking across carriers, you know, that's, that's of course where you know where work with you know the, the MEF and others is uh, is obviously extremely important you know the inter vendor interoperability as well you know we want to do away with this uh, service chain uh, you know police which we which we are uh, um, uh, playing um, uh, playing today because that that takes up far uh, uh, too much time uh, from uh, you know from our uh, from our perspective and then next step, you know, it's all about the, you know, the business need because on the previous slide and the, and the slides before, we continue to focus heavily on the individual components from a technology perspective. Our customers don't care about, uh, uh, about that. So they care about the top, the intent, you know, the business, uh, the business need, the business outcome. So we need to ensure that, you know, whatever, you know, all of these underlying layers, you know, uh, are, you know, being pushed up uh, to, to in order to, to truly uh, truly support that and you know obviously it's about it's about truly achieving a level of uh, a level of intelligence not every spike in uh, in data uh, or, or in bandwidth is necessarily an, an, an issue automation you know I, I, you know the you know when uh, uh, when we looked at uh, you know the the UAV, uh, example I think it's a, extremely important to look at automation as a continuum huh? you know there is no you know yes we, we may all talk about automation as you know we all want to be far right and you know the self-driving cars but how many people today would want to go and sit in a self-driving car eh? so you know it's important to, to to work on this but at the same time uh, you know know that our customers will want to have a level of uh, a level of control you know real time this is this is what our customers you know when they they buy into these concepts eh? but you know at the same time you know they can't understand why you know we can be real time and and automating our 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 solutions but you know then you know when when they get confronted with implementing this on a global scale that we still need to wait for you know sometimes months to get uh, you know the the underlying network uh, uh, initially delivered and you know also uh, need to to wait whenever changes need to happen at that perspective. So that's an, an area as an industry we need to continue to focus in on. And then of course self-learning. You know, this this is, is getting to be, you know, such a, you know, if you look at that, you know, that that convergence which is happening, more and more endpoints, there is no way we can we can ask our engineers, our customers to sit behind a desk and, and look at uh, you know some post mortem uh, reports to try and figure out what uh, you know what happened. So that's the you know for the next few years this is the area where we are going to be focused in on in delivering this to our uh, our enterprise customers. So a few key takeaways. Um, it's not about the technology. You know, as I as I said in the you know in um, uh, in, in in the beginning, you know it's uh, you know we need to understand that our customers are are interested in you know the business uh, you know in the business outcomes. It is it is important um, as well that we you know when we talk to uh, our customers that uh, you know they they also understand um, that it. it 
may not also be just about replicating what they have. And this is this is one of those challenges huh? because you know an account team you know may find it extremely interesting to go to a customer and say, this is your current setup. We can virtualize this and automate this and just buy the same thing, but uh, you know and and uh, and and and, and, and well, we'll we'll just we'll just replicate that environment. That may not be the best uh, you know the best solution either. So it needs to be there's a level of education required there uh, there as well. You know, these, the VNFs, not all VNFs are, e are created equally. Yes, we have the, the pure, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, VNFs which are created for a cloud environment. There are many which are ported from a physical, uh, physical environment. You know, may lead to all kinds of uh, challenges as far as, um, um, you, know, um, you know, how efficient can they be run into this, new, uh, into this new environment. But there's also operational challenges associated with that. You know, we, we sometimes see very, from a size perspective, very bloated VNFs. Okay, that's fantastic, but what happens if you know, you, you do an, uh, an update, uh, an upgrade, and you've got a, a, a remote site somewhere in Asia with a relatively low broadband uh, connection and a bloated VNF. Uh, you know, so, you know, all, all of your, you know, you know ZTP um, um, uh, and, and uh, all of the advantages which you've positioned to your customer kind of goes, goes, uh, goes away. Huh? And then talking about ZTP, it is about creating clarity. We continue to talk in abbreviations, and our customers may hear something different. You know, ZTP is a great example. When we originally launched ZTP, you know, we were specifically focused on our ability to deliver, you know, a, a UCPE or purpose-built box and then, you know, automate the initial setup of that box. You know, and we were very pleased that we were able to launch that. Customers actually heard something else. They heard saying, ah, you can do zero touch from an end-to-end -end perspective and are expecting, you know, that, you know, that the entire, you know, process from, you know, from, from the get-go gets completely, completely automated. And then, of course, you end up in, okay, how does, you know, a new automation actually link into, you know, maybe a BAU uh, process as, uh, as well. So creating that clarity, being clear to, to our customers about what is it they will truly be able to achieve can only help because then, you know, we become equal partners and we can, we can truly go on to that journey together, you know, and, and expectations are at the right level. And, you know, for example, another example is the, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, the bottom there on, on automation, you know, our customers, you know, it's always great to talk to customers about uh, um, all of these, uh, you know, high levels of automation which we can achieve, but it can be deterring for, for some customers. You know, they may want to have a level of control. And so, yes, it's great to aim for, you know, the, you know, the full solution, but maybe just delivering, you know, a small piece of, of automation and showing that you can do this is ab absolutely important. It will all also, you know, do away with some things which we which we sometimes start to see within an, within an, within organization, which is, uh, you know, automation fatigue. You know, so uh, you know, make sure that you're able to deliver something short term as well. And then, you know, my last slide, referring back to the title of my, of my presentation, you know, I think the only way to do this is by eating the pudding. You know, you need to get out of there, you know, and I, you know, obviously we need all of the, you know, automation, we need all of the architecture, we need all of that. But if we don't implement it with our customers and don't learn from our customers, then you know we, you, we're, we're lost because then we will have created a lab environment, which looks great, huh? but in the wild, it may not. It may. It may not always uh, always work. We are eating the pudding. Uh, for, for for now, you know, uh, the pudding tastes uh, tastes uh, tastes good. Huh? Uh, still, a lot of work before the pudding will be completely eaten. I can tell you. I can tell you that. Huh? And with that, uh, um, hand it back. Uh, Yeah, so we so we we went with a with a cloud native approach from the very start, huh, where we said, okay, you know, we need to give we need to give our customers, an, you know, a, a a clear choice, huh? and um, you know, as a result, we 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 kind of 
develop this, this open stack approach which we ha which where, where we give the ability to customers to deploy either you know in a you know on, on a white box UCP environment but also at the same time in you know the cloud environment and that you know our developments there and the tools which we are making available you know can actually be deployed you know on either side and I think it's extremely important because if you go out with a you know with a solution which is you know yes it's cloud but cloud only you will you will see that some applications may not be always well suited to to do this if you if you go with an approach which is you know only at at the edge um, or get, uh, you know you may have some smaller sites which which are going to be you know challenging for you to do, to implement and but by giving the customer the choice uh, and, and at the same time have the, 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 the same underlying you know, techno technological basis. Huh? That, that seems to be you know, quite attractive for our customers. It gives them the ability to, to also evolve as their environment evolves. Huh? So that's, you know, that's what we're seeing from our, uh, from our side. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.